topic now is the doctor-patient relationship of the future. Mm -hmm. And I would like to ask you about how you see this relationship to reform in the future. But I don't have to, because you have this relationship with your doctor than it sends already. <laughs> well, yes. The, so, the, the word e-patient means empowered, engaged, equipped, enabled. It is the patient of the future approach. It's the opposite of a patient who sits back and says, I don't know anything. You're the doctor. You tell me what to do. But it's okay if someone wants to behave that way. If somebody, it's sure. To them. If, you, if, if somebody, this is patient-centered care, right? If somebody wants to be taken care of and they don't want to have to think about things, patient-centered care says you have to listen to that. How is that different from other doctors in the world? Well, so I he's, know people... He's amazing, that's how. We know you, Danny. <laughs> Indeed. I mean, he saved my life with way he welcomed me being actively involved. Some doctors believe, and this was true 30 years ago, that they're the only ones who can know anything useful and their job, some have told me that they even, they were trained that it's their job to know things patients don't know and tell patients what to do. To become demigods for patients. Well, for all practical purposes, yes. And that model was true a generation or two ago. But today, there's lots of evidence that patients can know useful things too. And even, even go ahead. So how your relationship changed with Danny since you, you know, got to know each other? Well, it's funny. He and I were, uh, were always that way from the beginning. In the speeches we sometimes do together, he has a slide. It's one of his favorite emails he ever got through the hospital system. Where I, I had just joined him in 2002 and I wrote him an email saying, I'm having a very cool patient slash customer experience because I could email him and he's just always been that kind of doctor and you know when trouble hits it makes such a difference that I don't have to wait three weeks to get an appointment I can just drop him a note in the computer and he welcomes it so he works for you like a guide in the jungle of you know digital health medical information and I understand how well you communicate on and offline with him but how is that you don't mention that you sometimes sing on stage? <laughs> it's quite it's, a feature for a doctor-patient <laughs> relationship. Well, it is. It is. But we have been asked. There's, there are a lot of people these days who want to hear about this different kind of relationship. But usually they hear it by hearing a patient talk. This is what my doctor does. And having a doctor talk. This is what my patient does. And we will sometimes give a speech together where we tell my cancer story in role plays. And at the end, I will start a song and say it's like doctor-patient harmony. And we sing a duet. And do you plan to drop an album quite soon? You know, that's, that's a scary thought. I, I would not expect that, I guess. I, how, many, how many songs do you need for an album? There are no solo albums with one song. <laughs> and remixes, of course, that's part of it. Now. Is it an album? Yeah. yeah. If it's yeah. one song? I, yeah. Okay. It's the Good. internet's word. Everything is possible. Would you like to hear a verse? No, no I'm fine. No. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Dave.